Good morning, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us here on KXAN Live. I'm Will Dupree coming to you from Austin. Today, Texas lawmakers are holding opening day of the 87th leg legislative session, and we now want to bring in our politics reporter, John Engel, who joins us this morning from the Capitol there. A cold morning out there, John, but thank you for being here and joining us and talking about what lies ahead for the lawmakers. Yeah, good morning, Will. It is cold, but it's a beautiful day to start uh, the legislative session, 140 days to go. That is for sure, and we have so much to cover, so let's dive in. What's going to happen today? Lay out what kind of procedural things will be happening and what some of the safeguards are going into the Capitol building. Yeah, so today is a lot of pageantry. We have the swearing in of members who have re been reelected or new incoming members. And we'll also have the, the election of the Speaker of the House. So Representative uh, Dade Phelan of Southeast Texas says he has the votes and has been named the presumptive House Speaker for the last couple of months. So that's the big uh, order of the day, so to speak. And we know the members will be um, coming to the Capitol for the swearing in with members of their family and guests. Um, everyone who goes into the Capitol, according to uh, DPS today, the Department of, of uh, State Police, they're, they're saying that everyone has to get COVID-19 uh, tests to enter the building. And that was something that wasn't uh, thought to be required even a couple of weeks ago as we were learning the plans for the legislative session. But we know for at least today, everyone will get a COVID-19 test. And so, well, I'll have my uh, photographer, Julie, show you the tents that DPS has set up in front of the, the north side of the Capitol building right now. There's two or three, and then there's another tent that I don't believe you can see. So staffers and, and representatives and senators have already started filing through those tents to, to get their rapid COVID-19 test before they can enter the Capitol building. And um, we also see if, Julie, can you pop over to the right of that back tent? I think we're already seeing the start of our, our first demonstration of the legislative session, Will. So things are getting started here at the state Capitol and uh, heavy police presence uh, throughout the grounds. And so I think uh, a lot of caution and um, careful steps to make sure that everyone feels safe as we get going on the session today. That is for sure, John. Now let's uh, talk about what some of the big issues will be. Let's outline those for our viewers who are watching this morning. Uh, what do you think will be taking the most importance? I would imagine that the coronavirus pandemic, the ongoing pandemic, would be maybe top of mind. Absolutely. And there are a few things that have to get done, right? So the, the uh, Texas legislature has one constitutional responsibility, and that's to pass a budget. And so obviously that has uh, some impacts from the coronavirus pandemic as well. Uh, lawmakers yesterday finding out from the state comptroller that they have $1 billion uh, fewer to play with, uh, a budget shortfall heading into this legislative session. Now that's not as bad as they expected. In the summer, the comptroller said that they would potentially face a $4.6 billion budget deficit. So the big item is the budget. They also have to deal with redistricting, which is redrawing the state's political maps, which happens once a decade. And this time it's different because uh, the, the, there won't be federal oversight or a federal checkoff of the maps that Texas lawmakers draw here in the state. Um, likely that that comes during a, a special session over the summer because of delays to the U.S. Census uh, results. So this session, it's about budget. It's about COVID. I think you will have a, a significant amount of time spent on criminal justice reform and policing. Other than that, it's, it's hard to know what bandwidth there is for other topics. A lot of talk every session about um, marijuana in Texas or casino gambling. Those things get a lot of clicks and they get a lot of attention on social media. Whether or not there's time for that or the attention span for that in this legislative session uh, seems more unlikely. We're looking at budget, we're looking at redistricting, and we're looking at criminal justice reform and uh, all the COVID-related things, well, health care as well. Going back to the budget, you did mention that there is a new projection, at least, uh, released by the Texas Comptroller yesterday that that shortfall would be about, what, $1 billion at this point? Yeah, $1 billion. So. That, that sounds bad, but it's not as bad as the $4.6 billion they were expecting back in July. But look at what's changed since July. Uh, the economy has, has largely opened throughout the state. And while the coronavirus pandemic continues to surge statewide and, and here in Austin, where lawmakers are now gathering, the economy was able to, to pick up some steam. And so I, I think it's, it's easy to draw the connection between that reopening and that expansion of, of services and, and access for people 
um, in Texas to the, the fact that the budget deficit is a lot more rosier than it was uh, just a few months ago. And so that also changes priorities. When you're thinking about a $4.6 billion budget deficit, you're in search for a lot of new revenue. When it's $1 billion, it's a little easier to move some things around and still find some new revenue, but it's not as much of a haul. If anyone's just joining us, John, I do want you to point out once again uh, those tents that are to your uh, right, I believe. Uh, this is where lawmakers and staff members or anybody who's going to the Capitol, Capitol today will have to undergo a COVID-19 test. Yeah, we'll have to go through those in order to get to the building too. So be doing that uh, later this morning. But I'll step out of the way here so that jo Julie can, can point you back there to the uh, DPS tents where they'll be providing those rapid COVID-19 tests. Everyone who goes in the building will get a rapid test. That was new from DPS last night. We uh, previously didn't think that those tests would be required, but DPS saying that that's a step to ensure that everyone stays safe and that they can ensure that everyone who does get inside that building um, does not have a, a positive COVID-19 case. So it'll be interesting to see how many people do in fact get tested uh, today, well, we'll be tracking that down throughout the day, but um, so far it, it looks pretty seamless. It's still early in the morning, um, but I think a lot of us were expecting that if everyone was required to get a COVID-19 test to access the building, that there would be these long lines and delays to, to get inside. But for now, everything's running real smoothly. There's there's some people walking around the grounds on an early, uh, early chilly morning and, and a heavy DPS presence throughout as we're already starting to see some demonstrators gather on the, uh, the steps of the north side of the Capitol. Given that there will be demonstrations and you're already seeing some people gathering today, uh, a big question has been about security at the Capitol. Uh, there's been reporting that the FBI has warned that potential violent attacks or riots may happen at all 50 state capitals. Uh, we don't have any information to share about that at this time here in Texas, but can you tell us and give us a sense about what kind of security you're seeing at the Capitol grounds today? Oh, it's a heavy presence. There's DPS on, on every corner. You, you don't have to look very far to, to find them. I'll let Julie actually pop around here. Julie, if you look to your left too, you'll see some, some DPS officers, uh, uh, troopers standing over there. Uh, well, it's, it, it, it feels safe. There's, there's a presence throughout the Capitol grounds, especially on the north side where we are, given that all the traffic into the Capitol will come through the, the north side entrance. And so not surprising that the, the heavy police presence is over here. Um, and, and we really haven't seen that many pro, uh, demonstrators just yet. A few have started to get onto the steps, but look, uh, a lot of those who work in the Capitol, members and, and staffers included, are, are very concerned about what they're hearing and what they're seeing and, and the general rhetoric of the, the, political, you know, the political discourse that we have right now and what they saw on January 6th in Washington, D.C. Those kinds of things for people who, lit, who work in a, a government building like a Capitol building, they think about uh, what if that happens here? What if that would happen to me? And, and what are authorities doing in, in my city to make sure that we're safe? So I, I know that DPS has taken this very seriously and has, has looked at the events that we saw in DC as, as something that, that cannot be ignored even at home, whether or not you have those, a, a threat that you referenced from the FBI. They are taking some pretty serious steps. Um, they're, they're walking throughout the grounds this morning. There's been, um, teams of DPS on pretty much every corner. We've seen some in that more prototypical riot gear. Uh, I think Julie saw a helicopter circling around the, the Capitol grounds earlier as well. So uh, no doubt, Will, that there is a, a heavy presence here and that at least for now, while it's still quiet, it, it seems like things are, are really calm and, and feel safe. Please tell Julie that uh, she's doing a very good job about panning and zooming. Uh, I think that it's very appreciated by our viewers who are watching at home, kind of seeing the lay of the land and what things look like there at the Capitol today. Um, I do want to bring up your reporting from yesterday. You got a chance to talk to a few lawmakers who are beginning today. Uh, what are their feelings about how things will unfold and uh, what's to come? Well, we do know that two Democrats in the in the state house are just not going to come for the swearing in at all, and they'll they'll do that 
uh, remotely. A lot of people don't feel comfortable being here right now. Those Democrats calling the event uh, or, or today's opening of the legislative session a super spreader event or potentially a super spreader event. I know other members share those concerns too and er everyone is, is going about it in a different way. I know that uh, State Senator uh, Sarah Eckhart um, of Austin is planning to be here at the Capitol today. She was already sworn in over the summer given that she was elected in a special session to, to fill the seat vacated by by Kirk Watson, but um, others are, are coming in and, and leaving it immediately after. Uh, State Representative Donna Howard of Austin telling me that she's going to do her swearing in and she's going to hit the road. Um, others plan to stay here all day. So it's, it's kind of a mixed bag and, and speaks to the tolerance level of, of each of these representatives to, to see what makes them feel safe, what makes their staff members feel safe. I know a lot of staffs are, are still working from home and doing virtual meetings, even though the Capitol is open and they've got office space and it sort of feels like things are back to normal. But um, a lot of these uh, representatives and senators still just don't feel comfortable being in this building. So um, given that today is mostly procedural, um, you've got the swearing in of members and then you've got the, the election of a, a new Speaker of the House. I don't know that too many members will stick around for the entire day, but we'll be tracking them down throughout the day here on KXAN at, and at KXAN.com to see how these COVID precautions are really playing out. Interested to see how fast that COVID-19 testing uh, unit out here on the north side works. Um, interested to see how crowds gather inside the Capitol building itself and in the gallery and, and during, in, the, during those swearing in ceremonies. Um, all of that is yet to be seen and we're, we're going to have to play it by ear along with a lot of members. Well, that's, that's kind of how this session feels. Yeah, very different for sure, but we will still cover it nonetheless as we have in years past. Uh, KXAN's pol political reporter, I should say, John Engel, joining us once again live there at the Capitol. John, we want to say thank you so much for joining us and providing that insight and giving us a sense about what's happening out there on the grounds today. And we know you'll be following everything, so we may follow up with you here later today. But thank you again. Of course. Thanks, Will. All right, everyone. That was our KXAN political reporter, John Engel. We want to thank him again for joining us this morning. Again, we have full coverage of opening day of the 87th legislative session here in Texas over on our website. That's KXAN.com and on the KXAN news app. So please download that. Additionally, everyone, please be safe and be careful out there because of the pandemic. And we will see you back here throughout the day with additional updates. Once again, I'm Will Dupree here in the KXAN live studio. Thanks for watching. Take care.